come to the light. Come to the... Wait a minute. There you go. That's it. Come on. Hello all you minders out there. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to do a review today of the Huion Light Pad. Now, Huion is a Chinese company best known for their graphics tablets, you know, kind of like the Wacom graphic tablets where you can draw and paint on a tablet and it shows up on your computer. But they also make these light pads. Light pads are great for tracing and transferring, and we're going to look at that a little bit. And we're also going to talk about whether you even need a light pad. But either way, it's a pretty cool product, so let's take a look at it. But first, everybody give it up for my studio partner here, Reese. Thanks, buddy, for getting this all set and ready for me. What? Yeah, well, I'm about to explain to everybody what a light pad is. Well, don't sweat it. You spend most of your time in the dark anyway. Okay, on to take a look at the product and talk about light pads in general. All right, so this is the one that I bought. This is the A3 size, which is the overall dimensions are 18.9 by 14.2 inches. But the illuminated space is about the size of a sheet of tabloid paper, 11 by 17. In this case, it's a little bit bigger. It's 16.9, uh, but it's 12.2 inches wide. So that's your illuminated, your illuminated space. This one, I think on Amazon cost me about $96, if I'm not mistaken. Here's a picture showing all their sizes. And some of the smaller ones are really, really quite reasonable in price. Truth be told, this one is very reasonable in price. If you've ever priced the uh, Artograph light pad, um, it's more than twice as much as this uh, for a comparable amount of space. So, and I don't know that Artograph has anything that this doesn't. I don't know. I've never used an Artograph. I have an Artograph opaque projector, but I don't know anything about their light pad. I've not used it. So let's take a look. You open the box, it's very simple, not much here. A um, little thank you card, some documentation in multiple languages. Have the power supply, which I'll go ahead and take out. And the light pad itself. And there it is. The reason I was interested in one of these, since I already do have a light box, is portability and lightweight. And it is. Here you can see the thickness. Quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch. Very light. It's about the weight of a plywood drawing board of the same thickness. I think that's cool because I could take it to my chair down in the living room and prop it on my lap as a drawing board if I want to. Or here in my studio, I can easily put it up on an easel if that's a more comfortable drawing position. Okay. So let me plug it in and we'll take a look at the operation. Now it's a simple plug in, nothing to it with the AC adapter that comes with it. And a power light indicates that it's on. One of the things that impressed me the most about it is the multi brightness levels. When you power it on, you simply touch up here and it powers all the way on to full strength. You touch it again and it powers off. Let me turn my studio lights off here, see if this makes a difference. There you can see the illumination. And as I touch and hold, I can dim it. One touch sets it all the way off. One touch brings it all the way back. Touch and hold and it dims down or brightens up, depending on how long you hold it. You can go quite dim. And that's helpful if you're doing something like tracing paper. Now, I know you can see through tracing paper, but sometimes it, it's helpful to have tracing paper on a light box. Sorry for the pulsing. That's just going to be... Uh, a, a syncing thing with the video and the, and the LEDs. Now, let's just talk about a minute about 
light boxes and light pads in general, whether you even need them. If you're a watercolor painter, especially if you're doing it for a hobby, probably not. You probably don't need it. Um, this is the kind of thing that is typically used a lot by professional artists and illustrators. In most cases with uh, watercolor, um, you can transfer, and that's primarily what I use it for, you can transfer your work to your watercolor paper simply by either using transfer paper. Transfer paper is, a, is like a graphite paper that you slip under your, your drawing or your reference. And as you bear down, it transfers to your paper. Or you can use a graphite pencil and just shade the back of your drawing and transfer it that way. Of course, the third way is to draw directly on your watercolor paper. A lot of people aren't comfortable doing that. I do it a lot, but um, a lot of times I prefer, especially in a complex subject, working out my drawing ahead of time or even studies ahead of time and then transferring it for a final painting later. And that's my primary use for these. Now, this will probably be the next project in which I'm actually uh, going to use this light pad. If you've been following my videos, you saw this study. This is the actual watercolor pen and wash, line and wash study that I did for this guy. In preparation for a painting, and I think this is good, I'll probably do a little bit of iterative drawing, which means um, I'll trace him onto my watercolor paper, but I'll make some changes. In preparation for that, I had a blow up made just uh, down at the UPS store that's close to my house. This is just standard bond weight paper like you get in a copier. That's a good example, a real good example of what a light pad will do for you. It does a lot easier than having to worry about transfer. Transfer, transfer with uh, graphite paper or shading on the back with graphite can sometimes be a little clunky. Um, it's not a big deal. Again, um, if it's something that you're not going to use a lot, you probably don't need one. But I wanted to just talk about what they were. Talk about this one in particular, just so you'd be informed. Now let me show you how this works with watercolor paper, and that's kind of the subject at hand here. Varches, hot press, 140 uh, pound paper. And you can see on their brightest setting, you have no problem seeing through there and tracing that. And I even have uh, some ambient lights still on in the room. If I were to turn all lights off and go dark, I'd be able to see that even more. That's actually a plus because you want a little bit of ambient light. You want to be able to see your tracing and your drawing as well as what's underneath. If it's all dark and you're tracing, a lot of times you can't follow where you've been tracing. So it's nice to have something that's bright enough. Now let me show you this. This is what I think is really cool. This is a piece of Arch's 300 pound paper. And if you've ever worked on this, you know it's like a card stock. Look at this. Again, I have, let me turn off this ambient light I have over here. Check that out. That shows up even through 300 pound paper. And again, I still have one uh, light ambient light on further away in the room but as I shade, shade it you can see I can even see through at the brightest setting 300 pound paper okay so you can see this is my original light table and it's a beast I mean this thing is a heavy metal box um, it has to sit on this table uh, kind of as a dedicated thing it's anything but portable it's got fluorescent light bulbs in it big tubes. I do have some light adjusting ability in that I can turn two lights on on one side or one light on on the other side or all three lights at once. The thing I don't like about it is it has hot and cold spots where the tubes are. But I mean, honestly, I'm not complaining. This thing has done everything it's, I've needed it to do over the years. It's just been just fine. But I am excited about this one. 
you can see the relative size difference. This is a little smaller, still plenty big enough. And I do think relative brightness is about the same. Though my old light table is perhaps just a tad bit brighter, but there's very, very little difference. And as you can see with the 300 pound paper, this light pad is more than bright enough. Thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully that'll give you a little more information about light boxes and light pads and this one in particular and whether you really even need one or not. Thanks so much for subscribing. Thanks so much for liking the video and thanks to you patrons for just being there for me and giving me a bit of a boost. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.